So we are now live. Thank you very much, Rhiannon. And good morning, everybody. Um, Happy New Year, if it's still appropriate as we get to halfway through January to say that. Um, school colleagues, I hope the term has started well for you. Um, also, a warm welcome to everybody who's actually watching this on the live stream, members of the public and the media, uh, watching it via the Council's website. Uh, minutes of the meeting will be produced in the usual way, and a recording of the meeting will be available to view on the meeting page of the Council website. Uh, to enable the meeting to run in an orderly manner, I would ask all members of forum who have video cameras to keep their video camera switched on for the duration of the meeting and to keep their microphone muted except when I invite you to speak. Officers will join us to introduce their reports in the same way. Any members wishing to ask questions or make a comment should indicate this by using the raised hand function. And when I invite you to speak, please unmute your microphones, ask your question and then mute it again to allow the officer to respond. Um, and as always, I would ask for your patience if we do run into any technical problems, um, and should this occur, I will declare an adjournment while the fault is addressed and the public broadcast will be paused. If it is not possible to address the fault, the meeting may be abandoned until such time as it can be reconvened. So, uh, members, we'll begin the meeting with a roll call uh, to establish who is present. Uh, and when Tamar calls out your name, please confirm your attendance by unmuting your microphone and stating that you're present and the sector that you're representing. I'm now gonna pass over to Tamar from Democratic Services. So, Adrian Ball. Yeah, presence representing the academy sector. Christopher Bennett. Present, representing the academy sector. Leslie Birch. Uh, sends her apologies. Okay, Nikki Brown. Present, uh, maintain primaries. Suzanne Cannell. Present, um, Primary Academies. John Culpin. Present, Academies. Nadine Gooding Hebert. Present, Hospital Education. Joan Hardwick. Good morning, uh, representing Maintain Special Schools. Sasha Howard. Present, um, representing uh, Maintain Primaries. Um, Ryan Kelsall. I think Ryan said he was coming at 10.15, so I'll just make a note of that. Um, John King. Present, representing academies. Alex Pearson. Present, representing maintained nursery schools. And then I've got um, Andrew Reid but I think he's um, sent his apologies and um, we've got Sarah Conant. Sarah Conant representing oh, the yeah, Diocese sorry. Bailey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Richard Spencer. Present representing Academy Sector and Chair of Cambridge Secondary Heads. Paul Strafford. Present representing Maintained Governors. Karin Taylor. Present, representing the academy sector. Um, Guy Underwood. Present, representing maintained primary sector. Apologies, my camera isn't working, um, but I'm in a, 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 my office, <laughs> so hopefully that's okay. Yeah, and Mark Vickers. Uh, present, representing the terms provision within the academy sector. Okay, and then non-voting members, I've got Jeremy Lloyd and Deborah Parfit. No. Um, and then I've got um, observers, Claire Clark. Councillor Claire Daunton. Yes, um, Claire Daunton, um, member of Children and Young People Committee and County Councillor for the Fullborn Division. John Devine. Present, <coughs> present representing the teacher unions. Councillor Brian Goodliffe. Present, representing Children and Young People Committee. Councillor Simone Taylor. No. Um, and Rob Turner. No. Okay, that's everyone I have on my list. Is there anybody else that I've missed? I don't think so. 
Oh, Thank Kansas Mendiola is just here now, so. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tamar. So we'll move on to the first item on the agenda, which is um, partly just covered that, but formally the apologies for absence and declarations of interest. So could you just formally report the absence, please, Tamar? I just unmute myself. So um, we have apologies from Duncan Ramsey and Simon Bainbridge. And Ryan Kelsall um, has informed me that he'd arrive at 10.15. And also apologies from Andrew Reid, substituted by um, Sarah Conant. Thank you very much, Tamar. Does anybody, uh, any member wish to declare any disclosable interest, pecuniary interest or non-statutory disclosable interest before the meeting starts? Okay, thank you very much. I can't see any hands up on the screen in front of me, in which case then we'll move on to the second item on the agenda, which is to actually look at the minutes um, of the last meeting, uh, which was held on the 14th of December. And obviously we're looking at these for accuracy or points of accuracy only, and I'll go through them page by page using the numbering that was actually in the um, uh, meeting pack that was sent out. Again, please, could you raise your hand if you have a point of accuracy that you wish to make? Um, so starting with um, page three, of the of the pack for this meeting. Moving on to page four. Page five. Page six. And finally, page seven. Okay, so I'm assuming the fact that nobody's raised their hand, we can agree these minutes as a correct record. And obviously, when I, I see you next, Tamar, um, I'll make sure that I sign those minutes. Um, the, the actions that came up, there were three actions which are then included in the action log. Um, I believe these have been complete, or at least um, the first one on retained funding and de-delegations are being covered in this meeting anyway. Um, and I know that Martin also sent out um, the revised growth funding policy. My thanks to, to Martin for that. Um, obviously, that item did generate a bit of conversation about um, new schools. I don't know whether anybody had any uh, any reflections about the, the, the conversation about new schools. Um, we did agree the policy, so I'm not intending we go back to the policy, but I don't know whether anybody wanted to ask any questions flowing out of that conversation we had um, before Christmas. Okay. Thank you very much, in which case then we'll move on to the main items um, actually of this agenda. So first of all, um, proposed future dates for schools forum in 2023 and 2024. Um, and again, can I ask Tamar please to introduce this brief report? Yes, um, so um, I'm included in the pack, the list of future dates, um, I, and it, they're based on um, how the dates have been um, scheduled previously, taken into account, school holidays, bank holidays, etc. I didn't know if anyone had any comments on the dates, if they were happy with the dates. No comments? Okay. No comments? No? Thank you very much. No? Obviously okay. stretching off into, into the next year to see your, your life yeah. going before you, really, when you look at the forum dates. Uh, yeah, um, I'll send out meeting invites, et cetera, and I'll make sure everyone's got the dates in the in the diaries. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tamar. So those are approved. Um, and uh, say so Tamar will take that action forward. In which case, they're moving on to, to item four, uh, which is schools mm -hmm. budget setting and the report um, given to us by um, John Lewis and by Martin Wade, um, which is obviously the substantial point. Oh, sorry, um, Nikki. Sorry, I just wanted to query one of the dates. Is the Friday the 23rd of February not in the half term? On the in 2024. I don't know. I might have got I'll, I'll double check. Friday the 23rd of February. I'll make sure I check. And if it is, Thank I'll and then Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. And if that's the case, well spotted. Um, while we're all very dedicated members of forum. I think people may object to actually a meeting during the half term holiday. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> OK, let's move on then to, to item four um, and the sort of the, the main item really today. Um, John and Martin are going to take us through a presentation uh, setting out the different proposals and decisions required um, by forum. One of those decisions actually by uh, maintained uh, members of forum only. And then there's an item where we've all got to vote um, towards the end. Obviously, after each section of the report, 
um, there'll be a chance to ask questions to Martin and John, um, in which case then I'm, I'm probably going to hand over possibly to you first, John, to, to start this one, looking at the national funding announcements that have also been made over the last few weeks. Over to you, John. Uh, thanks, John, and uh, Happy New Year to you all, if I haven't seen you so far. So, um, as John said, this, this is a bit of a, a repeat of what we did uh, the last forum. Obviously, what we've had since that time is, is the national funding announcement. We've got the, the school level data, uh, and we're going to step you through now what it's looking like, decisions that you need to make today, be clear on what's still to be made, uh, and then obviously how we finalise this budget round. So um, me and Martin will share this throughout. So um, we, we did receive the budget uh, allocation. It's come in term time, which is which is a positive from the DfE. Um, and uh, obviously, if you want to go and look at that overall settlement, um, you, you, you're welcome to do that. What we, we've done in the slides is sort of unpack that and showing you some of the detail. Um, this is the table that shows you the funding changes. Um, it's changed a fair bit, and there's there's various factors that uh, contribute towards where that change has gone. Um, but obviously, what we're going to do is look at each of these individual elements and work their way through and explain what's coming through the dedicated schools grant, what's coming from elsewhere, what's been assumed, uh, and the different factors uh, in, in that particular area. Just to remind you today, we will talk about the high needs block. We're, we're not finalising the high needs block today because we're still in the middle of working out exactly what we've got. And we'll reference where we are with high needs funding generally in terms of the safety valve later on. Um, but overall, uh, a 5.3% increase is positive. Uh, again, devil's in the detail as it always is, but that, that's the overall settlement that we, we, uh, we've received and obviously the, the, the upcoming figures we're based upon. Um, Obviously, one of the key changes that's come through is, and I think it's just quite startling to see the numbers, the increasing numbers that are coming into the system. Um, you know, we did see last year some some more challenging figures around numbers and demography. Obviously, the the, the growth that came through primary sector now moving into secondary, uh, and we are starting to see growth again in the primary sector. Uh, I have to say, this is not an even growth as, as we would hope. Uh, we'd quite like growth to be even across all our schools it is certain areas of, of the county. Uh, obviously, we have given schools demography figures and updates, and it's important schools use those uh, as they move forward. Uh, but obviously, the funding that you see there is is based upon the new October census and the changes. And these are the net change, uh, changes that have come through. Um, we are still uh, waiting to update the early years block. We're going to talk about the early years funding today. Uh, that's still based upon uh, prior January's figures. Uh, obviously, that will be updated in January. We do see quite a lot of turbulence around early years and the early years block. So the numbers are important. But again, to, to help with decision making, we know, you know, the allocation and the amounts, obviously, the pupil numbers will change and we do have an adjustment mechanism to deal with that. But we'll come on to that at a later stage. Um, obviously, one of the announcements that came through was around uh, in the awesome statement was a, an additional grant. So the table I showed you previously is the dedicated schools grant. Uh, there is now a separate grant that has been made available. Uh, it's called the Maintain Schools um, uh, Additional Grant, MASC uh, is, is, is the way it's been described. Um, we will be sending out next week school level allocations based upon the best information that we've got available at the moment. What we think it looks like is around an additional 15 million pounds for Cambridge schools, uh, which is positive. Uh, and this is obviously funding that's recognising the cost pressures in the sector. Uh, it's coming 1st of April. And I think the government have done that explicitly to ensure that academies and maintained schools receive the money at the same time. If it was added to the dedicated schools grant, there would obviously be a lag with academy numbers. So for the first year, they brought that forward to align uh, maintained and academy sectors. Uh, and what you will receive at school level is a um, an allocation based upon pupil numbers, uh, a lump sum per school. Uh, there is a, uh, an amount for ever six free school meals, eligible pupils. Uh, and we receive, as we do with all our funding, uh, an area cost adjustment uh, to, to represent London waiting and relative cost of living uh, in our areas. So when the budget uh, uh, figures come out, there will be a I say an indicative figure. We don't quite know how the, the Education Skills Funding Agency are going to finalise these figures prior to the 1st of April, but we have calculated that for you based upon the October census data that we've got and the information that's feeding into the formula budget that we've been allocated. Um, just to say, the other element that came through is, and I think we talked about this last time, is that the government allocated uh, an additional £2 billion. It went to the core scores budgets, Part of that was the high needs block allocation um, and uh, our share of the uplift in the national funding, the 400 million, 
that was allocated out of that core scores block from the 2 billion uh, was an additional 4.1 million. So we'll talk about the, the 104 um, million pounds uh, high needs block budget uh, in a later slide. Um, what I have to say is that there, there, there's some challenges around this. Uh, we, we have been asked to review our safety valve submission in light of this additional funding uh, that's been made available. So we're, we're busy working on it at the moment. We have to submit back to the government by the end of the month where we are. We still hope a quick decision will come at some point, but obviously the government wants to understand where that money is going. And we're obviously looking at things like inflation, uh, cost pressures, demand, uh, changes that are coming through uh, with that allocation uh, moving forward. Um, we will also are required in line with the previous, the, 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 the maintain schools uh, additional grants. There is an equivalent uh, for uh, special schools and PRUs. Uh, and we have to work through um, uh, an allocation. We've got to deal with a minimum new minimum funding guarantee, as we described last time, and a top up in the grant. Uh, and we will be reaching out to, to special schools. And uh, we've spoken to Mark and his team uh, about the Olive uh, AP offer in, in um, Cambridgeshire uh, to, to build that into the budget assumption. So we are required of the additional money we've got to allocate some of it towards that additional pressures grant that the government announced in the October statement. So I think overall, it's a slightly better picture than we expected in terms of the dedicated schools grant. Obviously, pleased to see additional funding coming through to education. Is it enough? Probably not. I think we need to get into that debate as the budgets are released and we start to understand where we are. I think it's certainly better than we we probably feared it may be, but there are still going to be individual school levels. And I think it will come down to pupil numbers uh, and the delivery there and obviously cost pressures um, uh, that are coming through. Obviously, we are pleased to hear there will still be some protection around energy costs going forward for schools uh, as a result of the, um, the, the capping mechanism. Uh, we we don't yet know exactly how that will play out and we don't know the impact on individual schools because obviously we don't hold that information. But context still tough, but po more positive than we expected. Martin, I hand over to you. Oh, do you want to stop there, John, for any questions, actually, before we go on to the, the final budget? I will do. Thank you very much, John. Um, anybody has any questions? Uh, first of all, on my screen, I can see Richard. You like to ask a question, Richard? Yeah, morning, colleagues. Just one question about the maintained school additional grant. Yeah. Um, will do we expect that that additional grant will be subject to um, a transfer to the high needs block, as as the initial grant was? No, this this is coming absolutely separate, Richard. It it sits as a separate grant, a bit like the supplementary grant was last yeah. year. So it happens after the uh the dsg's gone through so it knows completely separate no top slice it's it's money direct into schools and allocated at school level so what we will send you is what you will receive uh when, when it comes through thanks thank you very much richard just quickly checking to see if anybody has any further questions they would like to ask if so please put your hand up now okay i can't see anybody else raising question in which case then uh move on to martin OK, thank you. Um, so, as John said, um, following the announcements on the 16th of December, then on the 20th of December, the DfE very kindly sent us out all the, the data behind the numbers, which allowed me to start doing some of the modelling at individual school level. So um, based on the, the conversations we've had previously and um, the updated figures, you can see here that after we uh, adjust the schools block for the block transfer we previously discussed and the centrally retained element for the growth funding, um, we end up with a, a total distribution pot of £446.59 million, pounds, which is effectively the amount of money that will go out through the, through the funding formula. And as John just said, then that additional grant will be completely separate to that through, through a separate, separate payment mechanism. So alongside the, the presentation, you'd have received uh, the two appendices, um, appendix, appendix B and Appendix C. So um, one of these shows the, the school level data um, in terms of the totals compared to last year um, and to this year based on these current draft budgets. And then Appendix C shows the, um, the pro forma, which effectively shows the distribution totals to each of the formula factors um, across the, that. And, we, and if you look at the bottom of that, excluding the rates line, that will then come back to that total on the previous slide for the total distribution allocated out. Um, as we said, 
the figures have been updated to reflect the 22 uh, October 22 census um, with variations to pupil numbers we presented at the last forum included in that for, for new schools um, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about the um, the uh, unit values on, on the next slide so obviously we've still got the minimum per pupil levels um, and this year the additional funding out of the formula required to um, get schools up to those minimum per pupil levels is, is 2.8 million. That might seem like a lot, but last year that figure was closer to four and a half million. So actually the extra money that's got it gone into the, for, the funding and the way the funding is allocated is bringing schools up to that minimum per pupil. So less protection is actually now required to, to, to top schools up to that level. Um, likewise, because the um, minimum funding guarantee this year was reduced from 2% to 0.5%, the cost of meeting the minimum funding guarantee per pupil has also reduced and that now is 382,000 out of the formula so we're just spending just over 3.1 3.2 million on protection within the funding formula with the rest of the funding going out through the pure funding um, factor allocations um, which are which are now allowable so this slide shows all the um, funding factors. The column on the right highlighted in yellow are the factors, uh, values which have been applied in, in the formula. Um, I'd, I'd like to say it was good judgment, but I think it's probably more luck, actually. These were within a few pounds of the figures that I presented to you back in November um, in, in terms of that. The overall weighting is very, very similar due to the overall affordability. So um, not much um, to change in, in those overall allocations um, in that. So um, we're not expecting these figures to change. Um, and these will be formed that the figures which will be sent out to you next week um, subject to, to um, approval by CYP committee on, on Tuesday. Um, so all the normal factors there um, as we've had in previous previous years. Um, and as we said previously, we are now required to move 10% closer to the national funding formula. So the, the column just to the right of the yellow column is that is the minimum allowable values that we have to apply as per the national funding formula. And as you can see, we, we exceed all of those um, and then obviously on the far right it shows that the percentage increases compared to, to the current financial year. Um, other than those formula factors, there's obviously uh, values for sparsity. Um, they're variable depending on individual schools and their distances and the tapering of how that funding works. It's up to a new maximum of 56,300 for primary schools and 81,900 for secondary schools. And again, in the individual school level details, schools will be able to see their individual allocations for sparsity. Again, it's gonna be pretty much exactly the same schools who qualified previously. Some schools figures will have changed from last year for example, if their, their numbers have increased or decreased, that then affects the amount of sparsity funding you get due to the way in which the, the calculation works. But sparsity, there's also a number of other factors which are kind of outside of the main formula factors, mainly in respect to premises. So we've got our excep exceptional premises factors for those schools, where a few schools we pay um, additional costs towards the rental of playing fields or um, rental of, of additional buildings. Um, business rates, which I'll come on to a little bit. Um, PFI, which just affects one school. And then obviously the split site factor as well, which are currently only impacts on, on Hardwick and Camborne. Um, and that's been increased to £110,000 to, to reflect the, the additional costs um, of, of operating two separate sites as it stands at the moment. Um, business rates. Now, this is where we've still got one of the outstanding issues of the, the overall. So, um, so you'll remember last year, the, the ESFA introduced a central process for business rates. So effectively, if all of our building authorities start um, we could, um, the day the, 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 we effectively pay the bills on behalf of all maintained schools. And as it stands at the moment, we're still waiting to hear how this process is going to work in 23 24. So the figures in the current formula bu budgets are effectively notional, and more guidance will follow once we understand how that's going to, to happen in terms of the, um, the process for, for next year. Um, the one figures which are will be in there for maintained primary schools will be any adjustments to reflect any differences between the funding they received in 22 23 and the actual rates bills they received in 22 23 we have to make this retrospective adjustment because the, the, the funding flows through on, a, on, a, on an annual lagged basis. So they will be in there. But as I say, further guidance will follow on the, on the business rates process once we have clarification on how it's going to work.
Um, just the, the kind of the usual um, caveats, um, the, the figures in the which have been circulated and which will be circulated next week are draft um, until the um, final data validation is undertaken. Obviously, when we submit to the SFA, they usually come back with a, a number of questions and um, and so they will approve the budget. Um, as I've mentioned, this rates is, a, is going to be an issue in terms of the, the, the process. We don't expect it will have a, an impact on the overall figures, but it might just impact on, on some, of the, some of the adjustments which we make. And as I, as I say, every year, the actual allocations we receive by academies will be based on the, the kind of the ESFA calculations. Um, obviously, they'll apply the same funding rates, um, but sometimes the way in which they calculate the protections we know from history does does differ somewhat um, so you can see some slightly different figures in in in, in the final allocations there um, so just at the end of this one obviously take any comments and questions and and just ask to, to to note on these final proposals following the december announcements thank you very much martin um occasionally you broke up there but i think we got the, the vast majority of that so again any opportunity here now for people to ask questions um, if you could raise your hand if you want to, to pose a question to Martin about what you just heard. Get a reminder, this is a, a recommendation just to note and to comment on these proposals. Uh, Richard Spencer. It might be that we talk about this later in the meeting. I'm just very interested in the safety valve um, uh, progress and the relationship between um, the requirements of that safety valve, the 1% transfer and the implications of the additional funding in the November statement. Because um, obviously we have approved a 1% transfer and I would imagine that's still required for the safety valve purposes. But obviously there is a, there is a, a higher allocation coming into the high needs block than we were anticipating when we approved it. Um, have we got any sort of commentary or any updates on whether we think um, when when we think we're going to hear about safety valve, you know what 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 the proposals are or the thoughts are around that transfer and whether it's still required or appropriate. Thank you very much, Richard. I know that the next uh, forum meeting we're planning in March will actually cover <coughs> the kind of high needs and safety valve in detail. But I don't know whether you want to give a quick um, quick response to that, John. Yeah, um, at the moment, Richard, it still assumes a 1% uh, transfer for the next uh, four years, which was agreed uh, as part of that process. Um, obviously, they have contacted us. They've, they've asked us to restate where we're up to. I, I think we've got to put that increase in the context of the cost pressures that we're facing in that sector too. So, you know, we are going to have to recognise, I've already mentioned, special schools uh, alternative provision uh, will need to uh, have inflation applied. Uh, that needs to come through. Uh, we're also uh, sort of, discussion with the DFE and we are due to meet with them before the end of the month uh, about um, you know how things have changed since we originally cast our model where new pressures are arising what would happen with it so I think at the moment the expectation is we don't have a safety valve deal we're waiting for the the DFE to agree that so at the moment I'm, I'm sort of holding holding our line currently and obviously we will come back to you as, as John said and talk to you in, in March about where we're up to uh, with with that current arrangement um, my feeling is is that the majority of that additional increase will be eaten up by inflation so we're seeing independent school places go up we're seeing demands rise we we've got pay awards uh, to meet uh, appropriately across the sector we're trying to limit them in line with the schools increases because that seems fair and appropriate um, but obviously we're still working that through so I think a, a fuller conversation in March would be probably the most appropriate time thanks John are you okay with that Richard yeah thanks I think revisiting it in March just so obviously so that um, we, we we've got a kind of clear uh, trail around the order in which those decisions have been made, particularly with the curveball, if you like, that the November statement was, um, so that 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 one percent transfer is still uh, justified in terms of the the you know the overall funding envelope as it stands in March, as opposed to how it stood in November. I think would would make a load of sense. Thanks. I think it's I think it's fair to say John and colleagues and I met last night and one of the things we've committed to producing for you is effectively a kind of a line by line breakdown of the high needs block spend and the justification and activity behind it um, for, for the March meeting so um, hopefully that will will help with those conversations going forward. Thanks thanks that's really good thank you. Thank you Martin. Okay, I'm just looking along I can't see any other hands up at the moment in which case then uh, we'll move on to the next section um, of 
the report, which is retained funding and de-delegations. Um, and while of interest, everybody, the people voting on this will be the maintained primary members only. So I'm going to hand over um, to, to John or to Martin on this one. Yeah, I'll lead on this one, John. So um, I, I think, uh, as discussed last time, uh, we, we have uh, historic funding arrangements around uh, support for LA services for maintained schools. Uh, we've kept that at the same rates that we've had for many years now. Um, and we are looking uh, for a, a continued top slice of £10 per pupil uh, for services that we, we support maintained schools with. Obviously, at the last meeting, I was asked to, to pull out the sort of areas, the things that we do use that funding for. Uh, we, we use the funding to replace the education services grant or a proportion of the education services grant that we lost when the uh, funding rearrangements uh, worked their way through. Uh, I have shared with the uh, uh, CPH officers uh, this list. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we've pulled out here all the additional things that we do on behalf of schools that are not charged for uh, through another route uh, to support uh, our maintained schools. So um, I think in terms of uh, decision, we're looking for uh, obviously support for this to continue. So um, happy to take any questions on this section, Martin. I think the next slide is just the decision uh, that we need from uh, the primary reps. Oh, sorry. No, moving on. Um, Alongside that, obviously, we have the de-delegations as well. So these are funding schemes that support uh, our schools. Uh, I think we had provisional agreement uh, for these at a previous meeting. So uh, contingency scheme, our, our support for the cost of uh, free school meal eligibility, uh, the maternity uh, contingency uh, operation that we run, uh, and obviously uh, the trade union facilities time, which is uh, hugely important for us. And, and I think we wish to continue to support that. So. Um, I think, Martin, next slide. Um, yeah, we're seeking agreement across these areas uh, if, if the maintained school uh, heads are happy to support this. Thank you very much, John. Uh, and again, just any questions uh, that members actually have before we move to actually considering um, approval of these uh, requests or this recommendation. Just having a look to sort of see whether anybody wishes to make a comment at this point. Uh, Nikki, uh, you're muted at the moment. Just to say thank you to John for uh, providing the information on the services because that was what was requested <clears throat> last time. Um, and I think that it would be really helpful if going forward we can add this to the primary heads agendas in the autumn term because I think that where we look at the services that are being provided, the question uh, to ask is whether we, you know, perhaps is is the ten pounds per pupil sufficient to um, provide the level of services that we want? So, whilst I'm happy to agree the ten pounds going forward on behalf of everybody, I think a discussion, a, a wider discussion about, um, you know, are we getting the value? Is is it sufficient to deliver the services that we need? would be really helpful before the next, before this comes up again next time. And, and I think, Nikki, we've agreed that we'll bring things like the trade union facilities time back as well. I think it's important we all engage with this because that has implications on the academy sector too. So I think it's very, very sensible to be as transparent as we can with this and have a proper debate. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you very much, Nikki, for that point. Any further comments? Again, I can't see any of the hands up. Apologies if I missed somebody. OK, in which case, then, uh, you can see on the screen there what we've actually got to vote on. Um, Sasha, Nikki and Guy, if you're happy for me, we'll take them all as, as one group, um, but also happy to vote individually um, on each item if you wish. Um, if you uh, prefer me to do the latter, please let me know now. OK, in which case, then, we'll take them as, as one group. Um, I'll do a roll call of the maintained primary voting members. Can you indicate when I call your name if you agree or disagree or wish to abstain? So first of all, uh, Sasha Howard. Um, absolutely agree. Thank you. Approve those. Nikki Brown. Agreed. Guy Underwood. Agreed. Thank you. And, and probably we have to do this for, for completeness. Tamar, please, can you confirm the res results of the vote? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, moving on then to um, budget proposals, high needs block. 
I think uh, I, I've probably covered this, John. We've had two questions on this area already, so we've just captured for you there uh, the information about the changes where, where the, the budget is. I, th I think uh, one thing to say is that obviously we, we are looking at in-year where we are at the moment. Uh, we are predicting about £13.5 million overspend in this year. Uh, it may come down a little bit. We're, we're working through our forecast. That will mean a £51 million um, deficit uh, at the end of uh, this year on the, the, the scheme carried forward. Uh, if you weren't aware, the um, the, the agreement that lo uh, local authorities hold that in the balance sheet, don't have to write it back to our bottom line, uh, has continued. So uh, it's got a, I think it's got a mandatory override uh, in our, our financial statements has been agreed for a period of time. Uh, obviously, we await the green paper, uh, the promised uh, actions uh, rising from the green paper. Might be a bit optimistic there, but um, it, uh, it, it, it it's still coming through. But obviously, we, we are tracking our safety valve proposals we are starting to, to to shift on some of the areas actually and again we'll bring that back in march um what i'm keen and martin's described this we're quite keen to get into some more of the detail really show uh, the budgets the demands where things have come from so you'll probably see a slightly different paper in the in march than we've done in previous years thank you very much john um yeah it's probably more of a faded kind of green paper now isn't it really um Again, does anybody actually have any questions they would like to ask in addition? I mean, as you say, John, you covered this previously. Um, we probably have to wait really until March for you to unpick a little bit more about where we are with high needs, but just an opportunity now for anybody to raise any questions should they wish. Again, I can't see any uh, raised hands, in which case then, again, the, the, the recommendation is to note and, and obviously to comment on the high needs block following the December announcements. Um, in which case, then we now move on to um, budget proposals, central schools services block. Hey, do you want me to pick this one up, John? Yes, please, Martin. Yeah, yeah, this section. Okay, so this um, is an updated version of the table that I shared you at the previous meeting. Um, the only real change to the figure there, as you can see highlighted in red, is in terms of the national copyright licenses arrangements. Uh, the DFE have sent through the, the final figures for those. And as you can see, that, that has increased um, primarily due to the increase in overall pupil numbers because it's, it's pretty much pupil-led. So that's not unsurprising in terms of that allocation. Um, and what we've obviously done then is um, reduced down um, the um, one of the other elements in terms of the residual balance so that that doesn't directly impact as a cost of the schools. So I think all of those figures are pretty much as, um, as I say, um, as per those which were presented at the, at the, at the previous previous meeting there, um, as, as highlighted on, on this slide as well. So I don't think there's really anything more to, to say that. I think you just asked again to, to note and comment on, on the central services block um, based on, on those announcements. But as I say, it's only the the, um, the copyright license figure that's changed from what was previously presented. Thank you very much, Martin. And, and again, for completeness, whether anybody has any comments at this particular point. Okay, in which case then form is obviously um, asked us to, to note uh, on that recommendation. And we move on now then to budget proposals for the early years block. OK, yes. Yeah. So early years figures, um, again, these were um, published in similar time scales to, to the rest of the DSG. Um, some increases in terms of the, the funding rates you can see there in terms of an extra 34p per hour for two year olds, an extra 26p per hour for three and four year olds. Um, a very, very small increase on the early years um, per pupil premium um, per, per hour and then a, an annual increase of, of £28 on the, on the disability access fund. Um, per eligible child per, per year. Um, again, as we've done in the, in the last couple of years, we're proposing a minimal change approach um, in terms of the funding formula, effectively passporting those increases directly onto to providers. Um, so just passing on the, the 34p and the 26p for, for two and three and four year olds directly on based on our, our current our, our current base rates um, increased by those amounts. Um, both the early years pupil premium and the disability access fund um, will continue to be allocated at the, at the directly on, on the national 
national rate as we have done in in previous years. Um, we wrote out to members of the early years provider reference group uh, prior to um, to Christmas, and this is just a, a couple of the, the comments that we've we've got back there. I think it's very similar to the the conversations and and comments that we've had from schools based on the overall settlement. I think the the increase is welcome. The fact that we're passporting on the increase in full is welcomed, but obviously still quite significant cost pressures in in the sector um, in, in terms of that and obviously concerns around overall sustainability for, for some of the providers um, within, within, the, within the sector there as well um, and a, a kind of a across the, the county as well Cambridge city area um, when we're you know competition around wages is is proving difficult for some providers as well so there's some of just the, the comments that we've, we've received from the provider reference group members on, on the proposals. Um, alongside aside the, uh, the the basic hourly rate that goes out to school, the other thing we need to ask for approval on is around the centrally retained element of funding across the early years block. Um, local authority um, is uh, permitted to retain up to 5%. It's, it's quite a complex comp um, calculation in terms of what is included and excluded from the calculation um, in terms of that. I think last year we we retained in the region of around 3% and we're not expecting that to, to change significantly um, for, for um, 23, 24. Um, the table here um, shows the, the allocations which are being proposed for, for the next financial year. Um, there is a, a slight shift um, which is due to a, the reduction in the uh, two-year-old CENIF funding, um, which has um, not um, been as spending as much as it has done in, in previous years. Um, and, and we've also shown on this table as well the, the level of spend for three and four-year-old CENIF funding, which isn't included in the, the kind of the the, uh, the the retained funding element um, in terms of that and obviously as part of the safety valve work as well we obviously are looking at the, the impact on early years and that does form part of the, the proposals around some of the changes to, to send there. Um, so just again um, ask for any comments on the early years bot proposals but then also equally ask for a forum to to approve the early years centrally retained funding amounts for, for next year. Thank you very much Martin. Uh, does anybody have any particular comments? I have just one on that previous slide there, Martin, about the reduction in uh, early years and childcare qualifications. Um, in a sense, what the rationale of, for that actually is, um, what impact does it have? It purely is, it's based on um, a reduction in the contract price. So better negotiations is actually being main, we'll be able to actually reduce the price of the contract compared to previous years. So it shouldn't impact on delivery at all. It is just actually a, a genuine saving in, in terms of the overall price of the contract. Thank you very much, Martin. And uh, obviously, you know, thank you very much for highlighting really that obviously the, the challenges around the sustainability, the viability of this sector with the increased uh, costs going up. And I think obviously that point in terms of the special increased costs of, of Cambridge as well, um, which is making this quite critical. Comments to anybody else before we uh, proceed to vote on this? Can I just ask about the Senate funding for two-year-olds? Yeah. Why is that reducing? Well, the actual at the moment the the budget that we've got we're not spending up to that level as it stands at the moment so we've taken but the the, the need seems to be there I, yeah. I I would I would question that as a wise thing to do given that the need is there yeah I mean if the, if the need is there we will it will still be spent um in in terms of that because it is obviously needs led in terms of that we've just taken this as an opportunity to rebaseline the budget based on the, the the current levels of of activity so again as with you know the rest of the high needs budgets and anything which is sen related we, we set the budgets but actually then demand can sometimes differ from that depending on if it changes so i, I completely recognize what you're saying that's in terms of the, the risk there um but i think in terms of current activity it reflects where we're at but if mm -hmm. actual need and requests come through the spend will will match that going okay yeah yeah i think the problem is with two year olds there is, there is capacity off, in the wider early years block to, to pick that up okay, yeah we're off we're often just at the identification stage and then obviously we have the time taken for the paperwork to go through so that might be why it seems less but it's definitely that there is the need there yeah i'll pick that up directly with the service but yeah. um yeah that's fine thank you for raising that thank you alex any further comments? In which case then what we'll do is um, we'll uh, approve the early years centrally retained funding amounts um, and I'll do a roll call. I vote in members for this recommendation, uh, which is recommendation F on the screen. Um, and can you indicate when I call your name if you agree? 
disagree or wish to abstain. Um, so, beginning with Adrian Ball. Agree. Christopher Bennett. Agree. Nikki Brown. Agreed. Susanna Connell. Agreed. Nadine gooding Herbert. Agreed. Uh, Joanne Hardwick, if still with us. Yeah, agree. Thank you. Uh, Sasha Howard. Agreed. Ryan Council. Agreed. John King. Agreed. Alex Pearson. Agreed. Sarah Connan. Agreed. Richard Spencer. Agreed. Paul Stratford. Paul Stratford. Sorry, my space bar wasn't working. Agreed. Karen Taylor. Agreed. Guy Underwood. Agreed. Mark Vickers. Agreed. And myself. Agreement. So, so that's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much, Tamar. Uh, in which case, then, just moving on to the next steps, uh, John. So we've just captured here the dates uh, to see us through. So uh, obviously there's a Children and Young People's Committee uh, on Tuesday. Uh, you're very welcome to join and watch and repeat if you choose. Um, but we will certainly, re we're taking the same papers because we haven't um, uh, altered anything there. We will feed in the comments that you picked up to get around the safety valve uh, into that meeting. Um, we'll submit the final budgets out of that meeting on the 20th. Uh, obviously we are going to issue budgets. Um, I've just noticed the ESFA have sent around a calculator for the, uh, um, a mainstream uh, school additional funding so we will check our calculations against those and we'll send probably out both so uh, that will be uh, we'll look to issue in uh, next week the budgets following those two meetings uh, obviously we'll work on special schools and uh, ap budgets uh, with a view to getting everything finalized ready for for the march uh, forum um, and uh, obviously the main uh, mainstream budgets will be fixed at that point as well so thank you for your uh, uh, um, support and uh, you know challenge throughout this process it's been uh, an interesting uh, budget setting round, but hopefully that now concludes where we are uh, subject to final approval by uh, CYP committee in the ESFA. Can I just, sorry, can I, John, can I just can I just add a quick comment about obviously last time um, we were discussing the growth fund and Richard made the, the request that we send out um, the initial growth allocations and similar timescales. I'm meeting with place planning team um, late January, early February, and our intention is to then send out the kind of the initial growth fund allocations sometime in, in February. So prior to the, the, the end of February deadline, but so schools should be able to see those initial allocations um, in, in early February, fingers crossed. Thank you very much, Martin. Does anybody have any comments on uh, the next steps? Just to expand this item slightly, thank you very much, John, for sending out the email this morning to schools regarding um, the contingency for notional SEND and also funding for uh, Ukrainian pupils. Just uh, an opportunity, really, for any members who might have uh, questions or clarification about either of those items. That was covered in John's email this morning which I think was extremely useful, but an opportunity here now for anyone who wants to raise any questions. John, just, just one comment. I've had, I've had a couple of emails back um, about the timing. You know, we've used October census, which we agreed was viable. It's a few schools saying, oh, I've changed and worked the way through. So I think all the feedback's really helpful. I think we've, we've had to fix it. We need to go with it, but we will reflect on all that feedback. So if, if colleagues have any more information or thoughts on anything, please do email us. We will take them on board and we'll bring it back uh next time and obviously we will look to to set the, the methodology sooner next year ready for the collection points that we'll agree around uh the budgets uh for the ehcps in future thank you very much john okay i can't see any further comments on that in which case then we'll move on to item five on the agenda which is the schools forum agenda plan uh tamar please can i just check if there are any additions to the forward plan not that I'm aware of, <laughs> but uh, other than you said that about the um, um, the high, I, I think it's all on there the high needs block and the everything for the next meeting. So, other than um, I assume you don't need the February meeting, which is the reserve date. Okay, thank you very much. I, I assume you don't, but <laughs> no, no, I, I don't, I don't uh, see on the screen a, a clamor. For a meeting in February, so we'll we'll proceed to the meeting in March. 
Um, and obviously, if people do have particular questions, et cetera, around high needs, something to reflect on before that meeting, uh, which is for information, really, in terms of obviously how the safety valve, which may or may not be approved by that particular point, how that will roll out, but obviously the wider high needs reform agenda, which um, the local authority and, and a number of members of forum have been working on um, over the last few months as well. So that really should be quite a, an interesting meeting. OK, in which case, in terms of the, the forward agenda plan, uh, obviously, our schools forum to, to note that. And um, moving on to the last item today, and probably in some record time, really, 50 minutes. Um, item six, any other items of business that people want to raise? OK, in which case, um, we'll be drawing the meeting to a close there. Thank you very much for your attendance this morning. It's always um, absolutely vital we have as close to full attendance as we can do with forum, uh, considering the decisions that we're actually making and, uh, and obviously supporting the local authority. Um, as it navigates the, the budgets it needs to create and take to CYP. So my thanks to everybody. Um, my thanks to everybody who's been watching.